Good afternoon and welcome uh, to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Delighted to have you here as we have a chance to receive our special guests uh, from Russia. I've known Reverend Leif Camp for more than 20 years and have been very happy to be a colleague of his as our congregation has supported his work uh, in Russia and certainly have been glad now to have met for the first time Yaroslav Boyshenko. I probably didn't say that right, but uh, we are delighted to have him here and uh, you will learn more about his interesting journey, not only from Russia to America, but especially from unbelief to faith. That's really the story and the reason for this concert today. Uh, we're gonna let them speak a little bit, but I'm here simply to welcome you, and I'd like also uh, to invite you to join me for a word of prayer as we ask God's blessing upon our time together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we can enjoy and also for the opportunity to have heard your gospel today as we have gathered for worship. In Russia, some it is evening now, and we pray that as your sun shines around the earth at different times, so the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ also sh shines to every corner of the earth. We thank you for the faith that you have brought in the hearts of many there and for the faithful service of Yaroslav Voyshenko as well as Leif Kemp and their colleagues in Russia. We are grateful for the gifts that they have come to share with us and pray that you would bless uh, the time that they have here as well as in other places, that the good news of Jesus Christ, which is proclaimed there, may be made known also in our country. To this end, we ask your blessing for the sake of Christ our Savior. Amen. I'm going to turn things over to uh, Reverend Camp, who can introduce our guest pianist today. Um, yes, my name is Leif Camp. I actually went to Russia first as a volunteer, and then went to seminary, then they sent me to Siberia, and then I became a, a pastor in the partner church of the Missouri Synod, the, the Lutheran Church of Ingria in Russia, and, but in 1996, when I was still a volunteer, I met this young man in the Volga Valley at the capital, Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, this is Yaroslav Boychenko. We'll talk a little bit about his faith. He doesn't speak English very well, but, so I translate for him. He doesn't need to speak English over in Russia where he's serving, so that's a good thing but I will translate. He understands a little bit, though. And as I said today, we're not here to interfere with the elections. We're, we're here to interfere with people who haven't been elected yet. That's the, you know, to get them elected to the kingdom. But um, yes, uh, we will hear along the way, but he's going to play for you, and he will comment on some of the th things he's playing, and he'll talk a little bit about his relationship, how he came to faith through Bach, because long before I met him, God was working on him. He's been studying piano since he was six years old, and at nine years old, even during Soviet times, they would play classical music, and he heard a, a Bach piece as part of a soundtrack of a film, and he fell in love with Bach, and then later, when he was at the conservatory studying music, he actually got to see some of the words, and that was the first time he heard the name Jesus, so um, that was preparing him for when we met in 1996. When he was already 27 years old. So how God works for 20 years on his heart. So, Yaroslav Boychenko, Slava for short, so I might call him Slava. So. I, I'm, uh, I, I thank the head pastor and the pastors who are here for their spiritual care for us. I, I was taken away. It was a great pleasure to be at the service today. <coughs> and Paul, the, the music was great. <laughs> and, and, and now, now, I, now I can't feel you know, very sure of myself after I heard how Paul plays the organ. <laughs> But, but I, will, I will do my best. Um, I'm not really, you know, I, I kind of chickened out of being a concert pianist professionally. <laughs> but I'm thankful that you came to, to hear this simple little person from, from Russia. <laughs> Maybe you think it's a little weird that this the Russian guy came, but... <laughs> Of course, uh, the music of Bach has a magnetism to it. 
So it's actually this year is the 333rd year from his birth. That's half a 666. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> 333, three, three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he lived to be 65 years old only. He never left Germany ever. But he is a genius of genius of uh, geniuses in, when it comes to music. His music has influenced music over the whole world in France, Italy, South America. It's interesting to note there was a Russian poet who lived in America, Brodsky. He, he said, in every person is the image of God and in every music, in all music, there's the image of Bach. Uh, one of the contemporary atheists said the music of Bach might almost get me to believe that God exists. And one of the uh, contemporary uh, composers has said, not everyone believes in God, but everyone believes Bach. If we talk about his life, he was a relatively simple person. He worked very hard, and everything he did was actually, his whole life was centered around the church. Uh, he himself carried himself very humbly. But he, he knew he was talented, but he didn't wear it. Yeah, so he knew he was talented, but he wasn't prideful. He had a slogan that I think every one of us could, could also apply to our own lives. The meaning of every human life is, is this, to serve God and to praise Him. So to serve God and to praise Him. That's the purpose of everyone's life. And the problem of each of us if we, if we look at what, what is behind the facade we put up for the world, what we suffer from is our sinfulness. Every one of us. And every one of us are, therefore we're not fulfilled. And we're, we suffer from our own personal sinfulness and the, the sins of other people and the sins of the world. And the, the greatness of, of the music of Bach because when he talks about God he's talking about our Savior always directly always in prayer so he's, he's either praising our Savior or coming to him in prayer with our questions and our needs and he, he prays often about forgiveness for his own sinfulness but is always attached to the comfort that we have a Savior. So in his music there is a lot of uh, Christian theology. <laughs> so I'm going to play this well-known prelude. I already played for pre-service music. You can play it again. Right? Repeat. <laughs> Repeat. Nada. Repeat. <laughs> Nada. It, it's like a, a plan for the harmony and the building of this, the whole world, this world. How God miraculously created this world. 
He said, you know, a couple weeks ago, I kind of figured something out about this music. There are six intervals in there that there is planned and very clear dissonance in this piece. The, the, <laughs> the devil isn't asleep. He's always ready to attack. But the greatness of the music of Bach always talks about God's promises. Don't worry. Everything's going to be good with God. I have saved you and I will receive you. I love you. And you will be in my kingdom. And so, so the, the, this prelude it's uh, the beginning of a big cycle of fugues and um, preludes. It, and it kind of starts with, you know, it, to tie the creation of the world with also the annunciation of to, to Marie. And the last thing I'll say before I play. <laughs> Many musicians or even not musicians, they think they try to say that Bach was not very religious. <laughs> but if you look at all the music that he wrote for the church, and if you find that all of his music has been arranged uh, for all different kinds of instruments for all different kinds of churches, and if you na, consider na formu, na symboliku, and, uh, the forms and the symbols that he incorporates even in the notes of his music it's it's really hard to say that he wasn't a deeply Christian. faithful Christian so what are you going to okay so we're going to play the uh, the number two, prelude number one in C major from the well-tempered clavier book, whatever. So there it is.
любая музыка хорошая, по-настоящему глубокая, это молитвенная музыка. Uh, almost any really good music and deep music is always prayerful music. У Баха удивительное сочетание. Bach's a very interesting uh, composition melody, uh, of the way he mixes melody и, и and harmony. And it's interesting that when we talk about the melody, the, the melody line, he, he's considered a genius of geniuses because, because he puts these voices together in the songs. And the phenomenon is, of his music is that, that all these voices are equal and they all fulfill each other and they also discuss with each other but all together they are still just one. Like a young pastor or an, o or an older pastor I'm not so young anymore. I'm not ever I'm always still surprised how, it, it, how in our different parishes and, and in my parish all the people I have are so different from each other There's, they're not alike they're all unique and everyone is, is very important to God and everyone is a living stone in, in his church and the yeah, he forgot to say all those different people are one church and, and, and we all are together. I know this speech from previous concerts. So, so now he wants to talk about the next song he's going to play. Uh, okay, the most important thing to say Бах единственный композитор, Bach is the only composer, который почти каждое свое произведение, that almost everything that he wrote, подписывал соли Део Глория, he, he wrote to the glory of God, which yeah, only to the glory of God, which you have up here, yeah. Или или или. Or help me Jesus, or help me Jesus, yeah. <laughs> so everything he wrote. Похожая ситуация есть только у католика Гайдена. Гайден, who was a Catholic, did this on a lot of his stuff, but not as much as Bach did. But all, all these classical composers that we know about today, from uh, they were all Christians and tied to the church. Of the Lutherans, Buxtehude, Talimon, Handel was a Lutheran, Bach, Bach of course, Brahms, and, and Catholic, Beethoven, Mozart, and Haydn. So Alemanda. Okay, so we're continuing. Yeah, so it's it's called the uh, it's the German dance from the French suite. Explain that to me, but okay. On YouTube, he saw an interesting interpretation of this music. And if you Ah, Joplin, Joplin meets Bach. So if you find that on YouTube, try that, Google it, and it'll be interesting. <laughs> to, to, to two Italians on YouTube. They, 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 they turn it into jazz, and it's kind of interesting. I have to say, and, and Bach is, is still the, one of the most... Um, uh, one of the most played composers of, of, of that time period. People are still taking his stuff and redoing it and rearranging it and playing it. And especially with jazz musicians. Because his music does have very interesting rhythm. So. Syn syncopation and yeah. Syncop you can almost tell syncopation and syncope. <laughs>
did understand what suffering was. He really understood what suffering was. He was the last born in a family. He had eight brothers and sisters. Yeah, the, the genius was the eighth one in the big family. So he, had, he, had, he was one of eight brothers and sisters. Yeah. At 10 years old, his parents died. He was an orphan. His whole life, he fought for, to, be able to live. You know, he had to drive to live. His first wife gave him seven children. Only four of them lived. Three of them actually became also uh, well-known composers. Yeah. His first wife died and he got married a, a year later. Uh, and his second wife uh, gave him 13 children. Okay, he's a musician, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, a year, yeah. He couldn't wait more than a year. <laughs> so he, he, she, she gave birth to 13 children. And only six lived to adulthood. For, so in his life, from the 20 children that he was given, he buried half of them. And of those that lived, not all of them were ideal. One of his sons became a drunkard and dissipated. There was even somebody who had some psychological problems. And his whole life, Bach had, was working for the church. And so he served for 27 years as the cantor for the Leipzig Church of St. Thomas. And part of his job was he had to every Sunday write a new hymn, based on, a cantate based on the gospel. And not along with the words, he had to write the words as well, and that was to that he had to also write the words in such a way that they would best explain the gospel for that day. And so he was also, you know, as a musician, a very deep theologian. Um, between Bach and Luther, 150 years difference. But there are several things that actually tie them together. Uh, more than anything, of course, they, they loved God and God's word and music like a gift as a gift from God. It's interesting to note they also lived in the same land area, same area, same neighborhoods. They also, they also studied at the same school in Eisenach. It's kind of a beautiful place. If you've never been there, he's saying you should, be the, you should go there. I say first you should come to Russia. Stoti. <laughs> Another <laughs> place in Russia. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, so, so uh, b below the hill of Wartburg, uh, where, where Luther translated the New Testament. Bach had all, the, all of Luther's works in his library, and with, he made notes in the margins. He read them, actually. They didn't just sit on the shelf like most pastors, so it looks good. And if, you know, in America, you, you know, that they accidentally found Bach's Bible, and where on the margins, yeah, the, 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 yeah. you have Bach's notes, his, co his commentary, his questions, his underlining. You know where that Bible is, don't you? Do you know? St. Louis Seminary, yeah. It's an interesting story how it was found. But that's and, and the, he wrote the Passion of Christ uh, according to Matthew and according to John. 
all the uh, all the words of Christ when in in the songs are written in red. Everything else is written in black. And see, that was a little harder back then because you had to have a separate ink pot and a separate a separate feather. Now I'll play a few about suffering and about comfort in Christ. I have noticed that Americans are very positive people. If we compare them to Russians and Finns and Ukrainians, very positive. There's always, there's always, there's always kind of a border to these feelings. And of course, Bach, Bach, the whole rainbow of, of human feelings he was familiar with. Now, now I'll write uh, the prelude in which one? Uh, 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 the B minor. Yeah, yeah, B minor. B, B, B minor, not B minor, C minor. You did C minor already. C, C Italian. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So, yeah, and then, then after that, the Sarabanda. So, the Vuj Dva Padreta. So, he'll do number five and six, six now, I uh, yeah. Or four and five. And they were done by two uh, Slav musicians. Alexander Zeloti and uh, Godowski. Yeah. Играйте, play.
music you can hear. Chopin, a little bit of Chopin, Beethoven, Beethoven and a little bit of Rachmaninoff. Uh, Rachmaninoff, of course, it's interesting because he lived he, here in America and is buried here. And it's very well known that he really respected and loved Bach. And he started to, to play with the uh, preludes and fugues of Bach. And, and, and many people, uh, many musicians did that with Bach stuff. Now I will play some chorales and preludes that you maybe know. Before I play them, he was trying to find, you know, he wants to say a few things. And I have to translate it, so I've got to figure out what he's trying to say. We just, yeah, there it is. It's at the post letter. Yeah. I'll just uh, just say a few words. <coughs> it's curious, interesting. Uh, about you know, what is it about Bach that really makes him Lutheran? In his cantates. Uh, the 200 that we have left of the 300 that he actually wrote. When I need some inspiration for my sermon, I, I listen to Bach, and then I plagiarize his sermon for that. And that really helps me. <laughs> he didn't actually say plagiarize. I added that word. <laughs> Imagine yourself in all the, if you can see for yourself, all the cantatas of Bach. There's always these chorales that the Lutherans, we still sing some of his chorales. As, as someone once said, if we lost all of Luther's works, we could recreate them through all the cantatas of Bach and chorales. Because in many of these cantatas, he, he talks, you have this, you know, the, the human soul is part of, and it's the sinful soul for, for whom is given the Savior. Uh, the Savior that uh, that sinful soul is not worthy of because the Savior is just and holy. And in the uh, cantatas of Bach, we, we, we hear about the, the coming together of the sinful soul uh, the, 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 the joining of the, the unjoinable. <laughs> the, the, the sinful soul and the Holy Savior. And all the drama, the drama of these. The whole drama of the whole church year. Uh, I mean, if we consider, especially for the uh, 18th, uh, 18th century German Lutherans, is, is, the, the, the drama of this is that the, the sinful soul wants to hold on to their Savior, not lose him. And I've noticed, Paul, knows, Paul knows this, <laughs> in the organ book of Bach, after the prayer of our Father, the Lord's Prayer, is the prelude the, 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 how deep Adam has fallen. And what happens with us? The same thing. We pray and we again fall. 
And again, once more, for, because of the grace of God, we stand. And all the drama, the drama, the drama, uh, of the, the drama logi, whatever, but the, the, of the church here. Christ is born. And that little baby is already already in Bach's cantata is referred to as the groom. The как, groom is born. How, how, how is it possible that this baby is a groom? But that is what it is. And so the whole church here moves. Right now we're, we're, in the, we're running to the end of the church here. To so the end of the world, the end of life, when, when our soul is finally joined completely to its Savior. And Bach does this. It's interesting, yes. It's more interesting if you play. Most interesting is if you play. So the, pr the prelude, which one? It's going to play two of them. Six and seven. No, no, no. No, no? Not six and seven? Seven and eight? Ah, eight. I'm anxiously longing. Ah, because okay, the first one will be number six. Come sweet death, come blessed rest. And, and then he's going to sing, uh, to play. Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Ah, then, ah so he's going to do six and seven. Yeah, uh, God's time is the very best time. In Him we live and move. So you have that, those, okay. those two in a row. And then there's one, one more moment, just a few words. And that, <laughs> when the great of music of Bach, see, he doesn't just do okay chorales, he does great chorales. Anyway, that's a bad joke. <laughs> For Bach, there isn't ever really a simple answer to some questions. Even in the cantatas, when we have the word death, he, he kind of presents this word death, the idea of death, very mysteriously. So on one hand, death is... Like is is freedom is something that finally I I I have finally been blessed with. So so death. So it's kind of this this mystery because it's bad and good. I mean. Конечно мы не знаем, но освобождение приобретение звучит потрясающе. So 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 of course of course you know of course death is something that that we don't want, but still it's something that you know for us is is like Paul says it's something. I have finally obtained it. I finally reached the end and, and can what it gives me. Because um, faith is what awakens this idea in us. And faith wins. So this is a very intimate chorale. It's also not okay, it's intimate.
I don't want to persecute you much more. I'll play, play a couple more preludes from Bach. One of them, I, I correctly said, it's uh, tied to his own personal life. When I was nine or ten years old, Soviet times, I was a typical Soviet child. I'd go to the go to the library, I'd listen to the records, you know, the little old you know, vinyl records. I was, especially the ones I liked. And in the, in the Soviet theater, when I was a kid, the children's cinema, there was this kind of wonderful Soviet film. A kind of a deep fantasy film. Solaris. Solaris it was called. Andrei Tarkovsky. You all know him. <laughs> Tarkovsky is very famous. He was a very famous Soviet director and he loved Bach. He's one of the most famous Soviet directors, which is why you all know him. And this film was dedicated to the answer, the answer to the question, the difficult question of why am I alive? And so, you know, what is love? Why is love important? And what is shame? And why is shame important? And so in this film, in the soundtrack, you hear box music. And it was fulfilled by an organ, but, but this prelude we're gonna, he's going to play right now. It was, it was, uh, yeah, so, so it was, it was, yeah, arranged by Artemov, a Soviet composer, and he arranged it with choirs in the background and organ and string instruments to kind of really flesh it out. And I remember in, in my childhood, uh, with the, the whole atmosphere of this film when I saw it, the music the, of Bach especially, it, it, it just completely drowned me with an impression. I started thinking about the phenomena of what music is and from where does music come? Why is it so wonderful like this? How can it be so wonderful, what I heard? How can that happen? And, and Bach's uh, slogan that he writes, he wrote when I die don't cry don't be sad about me don't grieve I'm going to where music is born heaven right and so this the atmosphere of, of that film and in that in that you know the, the passing of time this movie kind of included that the kind of mystery of life and, 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 and the, the movie had you know different nature scenes and, and the currents of the water moving the, the, the seaweed and stuff around and, and the trees waving in the breeze and, 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 so, and, so, so, and, then, and, and then the central figure of this film was this kind of uh, unprotected person who needs someone to save him. He needs direction and needs salvation. In a Soviet film. And the, at the end of the film, there's the, there's the picture of Rembrandt in this film. When uh, the, 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 the prodigal son, the Rembrandt picture of the prodigal son, where he hasn't done enough good things, of course, and not enough love in his life, he falls on his knees before his father who loves him completely. And only with some time when I started to study the music of Bach and actually could read the words, 
Yeah, says the first time he actually heard the gospel clearly was when we met in 1996, but until then, before that, he had read it. He, he had read the words of, he was kind of surprised by the words of this chorale that he had heard in this movie. I call on you, Lord. <laughs> don't let me fall, don't let me despair. Give me, let, let me fulfill your word and be useful to my neighbor. prelude that you all know Jesus my joy uh, the, the joy of my heart and on my heart is grace yeah, 
this is yeah. Yeah, this is the, the, what he wrote himself. Lutherans in the 18th century they had over 5,000 written hymns. It was kind of like the, the dawn of uh, German Christian music. <laughs> and Bach actually grew up in that atmosphere. I think yeah we, we're we're kind of getting tight on time. There's a couple things we got to do. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump a little bit to t t uh, 12 and 13, but the deal at the two Rождественski. Хорошо. Нет, это я думаю, потому что времени уже пора. Слишком много болтали. О, хорошо. Слава богу. Anyway, uh, wow. Um, we're gonna do now. 12 and 13. You got the part of this is a little cultural moment. You get to hear the difference between uh, cultures because both there's two Christian Christmas lullabies he's going to play. One is Ukrainian, and one is um, Polish. So one is East and one is West. Uh, and the East, you know, the, the words of the the Polish one are "sleep, baby, sleep." You know, sleep. This is wonderful. Just sleep. You know. You gotta love the Ukrainians, Russians, and the other mentality. It's, they have a little different, and you can hear it in the music. It's sleep, baby Jesus, sleep. You're still not aware of what we have prepared for you. <laughs> so right away at Christmas, they're already thinking about. <coughs> and it's kind of an interesting. But you hear the difference between the, the, the minor of the. So which one are you playing first? So he's gonna play the, the Ukrainian Eastern one first. And then a little bit of pause, and he'll play right away the, the Polish one. So.
faith. For me, it's very easy and very happy to, to, to be here on, on the American soil among you to see that the church, like the body of Christ, it's one, we're all one. If we don't, you know, not even considering the different borders, the, the difference in skin color and culture and the difference of culture and the, yeah. And so thank you very much. So, so I'd, I, if you don't mind, if you would uh, not mind, uh, maybe now we could sing together a hymn, together, not a Bach hymn, unfortunately, but, 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 but it's, it's, uh, it's the Finnish actually song, but Be Still My Soul. It's page on these hymnals that are in front of you, if you're not from uh, 752. Uh, John Sibelius was a Lutheran, also a sinner like all of us, but also saved in Christ. And it's a, it's, it's a wonderful hymn, and I thought we might sing it together.
sure to take a cross with you. On the back of the crosses are two words in Russian. It's all three words. Spasi i sakrami, which is save and keep, as may the Lord save and keep you. Let those crosses remind you to keep us in prayer. And um, you're welcome to rush anytime, as you've welcomed us, I'm sure. Welcome to Yeah, welcome to Nizhi Novrat, any kind of thing. Uh, and we'll be around for, and there, there's a, ah, it's reminding me, see, we're not very good at fundraising, because he's got to remind me that there's a door up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, if you want to help the building, there's also, in your, you can take the program with you tonight, there's also information if you want to electronically give or send work directly to the fund we're trying to raise money for building the, the church building in Nizhinovgrad where he is the pastor. Uh, we'll be around in the back if you have questions or want to talk. It's fine. So, any, so, there you so blessings and thank you. Let, let's end with a short prayer, short blessing. Gracious Heavenly Father of all the professions in this life, the one that will remain in heaven we know is music as the angel choirs will sing and we will sing. And So we thank you for the gift of music here. We thank you for the gift of Bach and those composers who have so richly enriched our spiritual lives and our understanding of you by their gift of music. Bless all the people here. Let each one take your love home with them and grow in faith and strength. And bless us on our way as well. We thank you for all these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. And please... Ну, потихонечку, я там живу и работаю.